friends, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in the Ark. Well, I'll tell you what. I've been doing this channel for a little while since I moved into this van. I used to do a channel before when I used to live in a house, and well, my life looked a little more like normal people's lives, I guess, even though it was never really normal. <laughs> and I called it the Kingdom Within, and it's on there, but... I quit doing that one because when I moved into the van, well, I called the van life living in New York, and I'll tell you the truth, I was expecting to make it exciting like those van life livers and kind of show you my adventures and all that, and then I would talk about Jesus a little bit while I was doing it, and well, you know what happened? Moving into that van, my life is exactly the same as before, except when it's not. And that is that what I'm doing doesn't really have any meaning anymore. It's what I'm being. And whether I'm living in a truck or a house, it doesn't matter. It still comes down to the same thing. I want to know this love of Christ because it's what's important in my life. So, and well, I've been following this Holy Spirit and he's got me in one location in Virginia and I travel a lot of the same woods and I'm not living this great adventure, but tell you the truth, he put me in a truck that probably wouldn't last for very long out on a long, hard road anyway. Though I've done a little traveling in my little bit of time in my truck, and but I'm stationary at the moment. But I'll tell you what, I'm loving my life, except when I'm not. I was just going through a time where I was selfishness was back in my head that thought of Satan had gained some power on me and was starting to make me think I wanted things of this world and well part of it is deciding what's valuable and what's valueless in this world see and some of the things I've done in the past I thought oh well maybe they're di I'd be different now no the truth is that selfishness is always selfishness and it will always cause suffering and when I choose that instead of this love of Christ and I make my life about that, well then suffering's going to come with it. Though other people wouldn't call what I was going through necessarily suffering, it was for me. Because what happens is the more conscious you become of this truth, the less tolerant you are of other people's suffering in your own. Because what happens is you come to see that their suffering is yours and yours is theirs. And so therefore, Anytime you choose it for one, you choose it for the other. I was in a Course of Miracles meeting this morning on the phone. Uh, I couldn't get, I couldn't even get on the, the video part because, well, I was in my truck and I was barely getting enough to really just sit and listen. And then after a while, I kind of hung up and come out here into the woods and went for a walk because I need this. I've come to realize that Talking on this video is the right place for me to talk because I don't expect anybody to believe a word I say. And if I'm talking to you in person, you think that you need to figure out what it is that, on how it is you're right and how it is I'm wrong. And the truth of the matter is that I'm wrong. And the truth is you're right, except the truth is I'm right and you're wrong. And because both of those true, neither can be. So what that means is that I'm right for me and you're right for you and I'm wrong for you and you're wrong for me, even though we're both right for each other when we choose to be. So when I choose to accept that everyone else is, well, it's kind of like that prayer for St. Francis. I actually did mention that on there, and that was about it's better to be understand, it's a better to understand than to be understood. And that's because when other people understand you, that doesn't really necessarily mean anything, because what you're here to do is experience the kingdom. So if you want the kingdom, you have to understand them. Now, understanding them requires you to understand yourself. So this becomes a journey within. It's only when you see yourself for who you are in your entirety can you start seeing other people in theirs. It means that you see that every bit of selfishness you were doing, you weren't doing it intentionally. You were doing it because you didn't know any better. 
That's why Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So they don't know any better, and that's the reason people are hurting each other, because they're too busy trying to chase the world instead of looking at the truth of what it is their thoughts are causing. Because at the end of the day, our thoughts cause suffering when we choose to be selfish, and we might not see it, right? But that doesn't mean it's not happening. That just means we're denying our own truth about it, which is okay, because that's what this world was created for. One thing I see is the the Christians see God as, as dualistic, and then, like, in the Course, they see God as non-dualistic, the Course in Miracles, is what I was listening to to because I believe in both and I think they're both right even though they're both wrong both the Bible what they're saying and what the Course Miracles saying both the saying that they're, what they're saying is what Jesus said so but it doesn't matter because he's saying the same thing he's just saying it in different ways and at the end of the day it's never about what it is that's right for them it's what's right for you and what's right for you is only going to be right for you it's not right for anyone else unless it is, and God will give it to those that it's right for, and he will help each of us by helping us through other people, but it's about letting God do it for himself, because he knows exactly what it is you need, and if you'll trust him, he'll give it to you. And that's what I'm doing, that's what this journey is in this van. I moved into the thing and I follow the Holy Spirit, which is a voice in my head, which as you know, if you've heard any of my previous videos when I started thinking I talked to God they declared you know the world kind of declared me mentally ill and I don't blame them here's the truth if you believe that I talked to God then you'd have to believe you could too and you'd have to start doing what I'm doing and looking at yourself instead of denying the truth of who you are and start forgiving people so that you can be forgiven now, if that's not what you want in your life, then you certainly should not believe that I talk to God. Because it'll cause you a dilemma. And I talk about that in my presentations with the Montgomery County Police Department. I tell them when I do that presentation, I say, look, I want you to understand something. I'm going to talk and I don't expect you to believe a word I say. Because the truth is, if you really believe what I said was true then you'd have to give up your truth and take mine and you're not ready for that or you wouldn't be doing what you're doing and being where you are and it's not that they're doing anything wrong they're just not choosing what I choose there's nothing wrong with that God created it all and if I judge anyone for being wrong I judge God for being wrong for it there's your dilemma every time you judge someone else you judge my father is wrong for creating them because I'll tell you that Bible told you that Jesus said, and it says it in the Course too, so it's in both places, and that is that it was done in the beginning. It was God already knew the end in the beginning. That means he knew how bad it was going to go, and he chose to do it anyway. The question is why? And that's something I can't tell you until you choose to come willing to die in order to live, and then God will give you something different, and then you'll have something different to work with. And all I can tell you is that in the beginning, there was only God. And until you understand that statement, you'll never understand why God just simply says, I am that I am. But I tell you, we are whatever we are, and that is whatever we choose to be. But we have to have two thoughts to choose or else we have no free will. There is no experience without two choices. You can't say, I am this, if that's all you are. Yet, you can be anything you choose by the thoughts that you choose. But the problem is you can't choose new thoughts if you don't have new thoughts. If you're like me and you had these th horrible thoughts of unforgiveness and hate and anger. And you see the world as this horrible place where people have hurt you. And then out of that, you've hurt other people. If you're in that place, there's no way out unless somebody helps you. So understand that that's the purpose of me talking on these videos. I'm not here to tell anybody anything that doesn't want to hear it. I'm here to help people figure out how to get out of this place called hell. Because everyone, you know, quite often Christianity thinks it's a place. I'm telling you, it's a state of mind. And until you start freeing other people from it, you won't be free of it from yourself. But first you have to get free, and then you have to keep freeing people. <clears throat> and that's what I do. I just don't want to go back to being what I was or the person I was or doing the things I was doing 
and I start slipping that direction the moment I stop doing what it is that God wants me to do. And Jesus told me how to do it. He just simply stated it over and over and over in every parable. <laughs> but that means we have to accept that's our responsibility, that we have to give to another what it is we seek for ourselves and that selfishness can't reign in our lives. And even though he might give us something, it's not for us to keep, it's for us to give. And I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go be a doctor and make a lot of money. But if you're going to be a doctor because you want to help people, why not give a lot of money? And that way you'll know the experience of love even greater than just helping them physically, right? I mean, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you need a Lamborghini. I'm not, the, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, friend. I didn't figure this out. This Holy Spirit has given what it is I have to me. And many people will say, I've got nothing worth having. And I'll tell you, that's fine by me because the only thing that matters is that I'm true to God and me. And that's all that matters. If you want love, then you need to give love. And the more you give, the more you receive. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to be something in this world. The problem is that we think that everything we get on the journey should be ours. And then other people that have less are looking at us having all this more. And then they think they want more because we have more. And then they start chasing it. And then because they didn't have our talent, they start thinking they have to do something else. And they want to be like us. And we want to be like them. And we, don't, we shouldn't want to be like each other, friend. I don't want to be like you anymore. Not that I didn't. I just don't anymore because I made a new choice because I have a new thought. And that's the one that Jesus gave me. So now I'm just the thought of God being for itself. And though I talk about this, I don't expect anyone to understand it. Unless you followed that Jesus and figured him out. Because I'm telling you, if you actually give up what other people are telling you, because they give you this line of crock so that you can believe you're going to get the kingdom in your death so that you can be a halfway decent person but not really look at the thing but the problem is that all that selfishness in the end what it's not this world it isn't what we do it's what we do together friend there are six billion of us doing it and when the majority of us are doing it very selfishly we make decisions that are very bad for us all in the long run so right now you might see that in your little world the world has light but because we're not all making that decision together, the light that we've got is going to go out. But don't blame God for that, and don't blame other people or yourself. It's just the nature of man. That's what Jesus was talking about. So what I'm just saying is it doesn't matter when it's coming, because, you know, people have been declaring it for 2,000 years, and I'm not here to declare nothing. I'm here to tell you that right now is a wonderful time to know love by experience. If you want to be the light, this is the chance. If you want a new I am, if you're in pain and you don't like who you are, today is a good day to be a new I am. And I'm telling you, other people know you by your actions. So we're often doing the right thing in the light and then in, in the darkness, we're doing our stupidity, right? And I'm not judging you for it, friend. I'm telling you what I've done in my life. So I might be out doing the right thing, but then when I'm at home alone, I'm doing all these, all these, I've been addicted to everything, friend. I've been an alcoholic, a drug addict, a sex addict. I've been addicted to everything, but I was never an addict to those things. I was a person that was in pain trying to get rid of thoughts and didn't know how. And the only way I could was to put other thoughts in their place. But the problem was all the thoughts I was choosing was just causing more suffering. And I couldn't see it because I didn't know there was a way out. But Jesus taught it to me over time. And even when I saw it at first, I grew up in the Christian church. Don't get me wrong. I just didn't buy anything into what they were saying because it made no sense. They said God is love and that he loves every one of us with unconditionally. But if we don't choose Jesus as our Savior, that he's going to send us to burn in hell for eternity. Friend, that didn't love. That isn't what I was getting. So I don't expect you to buy, in, buy into that. And if you do, you don't want to listen to me, like I always say, because I won't make sense to you, because I found something better and something different. And so I give what I found, and I don't expect anybody to want it. But I want it, and because I want it, I have to give it. So therefore, I give it regardless of whether you want it or not, because it doesn't matter if anybody ever listens to these videos. As long as I keep giving it like the Holy Spirit tells me I need to, then it's done. I'm not responsible for the outcome. There was a time he had me 
doing trainings for people in prison. There was a time that I used to feed the hungry a little bit. That time isn't now. It doesn't matter. To tell you the truth, I was doing good things then, but I was also doing wrong things. I'm not here to say I'm righteous. I'm telling you, I got no righteousness. And if you look at my life, you will be so confused on who I am because I am nothing except the thought that decided to choose again. And now the I am I want to be is not the I am I've been. And I just keep trying to head down this path and trust in the Holy Spirit to get me where I need to go. And this was never about the destination. There is no destination. It's a journey that goes on and on. But when you choose a new journey, you'll find it. And the path you'll find will be called the kingdom. Because you find it, it'll be yours to have. But it's a choice that you have to make every day. There is no past and there is no future. There's only the eternal moment of now. This is it, friend. If you're in hell now, you're going to be there until you choose again. And if you're in heaven, then just stay there. Keep choosing that. Keep choosing it to be a thought that loves his neighbor as himself and loves his father with all his heart, mind, and soul. And whenever those other thoughts come in, put them before this thought of God, this thought of Holy Spirit. And say, Lord, look at this thought. See this thought that's showing up in my head? I realize that even though I have it, it's going to cause me suffering if I let it stay in here. So I'm asking you to give me a new thought. And he'll give you new thoughts. And he'll tell you what to do. And sometimes you won't want to listen like me. I'm, a, I'm not, I'm telling you, friend, I'm not nothing. I, I'm the prodigal child a thousand times over. This has been a journey that I have not been good at. But because, well, he showed me the truth of who he is, I come to realize that I have no purpose except to serve him. And at the end of the day, to tell you the truth, serving him is far more selfish than the things I was doing because doing these things that he asks, I feel better than when I was trying to hide my thoughts and do these things that were causing me pain and didn't want to look at. So at the end of the day, even though... I'm trying to be more selfless. I'm doing it for selfish reasons. That's why I'm only here to talk to people that are in pain because those that aren't in pain, they're not going to buy into that because they don't even know they're in pain because they're not looking at the truth of who they are or the consequences that they're causing. So if you're one of those, then don't listen to me because you won't buy into me anyway. You'll just say I'm a nutty old man, which I pretty much am. But Jesus is, those that knew Jesus came down the hill to lay hands on him. So, friend, I tell you that anybody that knows me think I'm just as nutty as they thought he was. But what I know is that Jesus' parables turned out to give me a greater kingdom. And it's not because somebody else taught me how to do it. Those things are hidden, and there's a bunch of them, and they've got to put to be put together in your mind right, and the Holy Spirit can do it. No one else can. You see someone and they've got the kingdom and you know in your heart they've got the kingdom, then you might want to listen to what they have to say. Don't listen to me. Just hear what I'm saying and then go follow Jesus, right? <clears throat> I don't care whether you hear me or not. If you ever see me or hear me doing anything other than talking about that love of Christ and that my Father's the greatest love ever and that forgiveness is the key, then you ought to run from me in a hurry. But because I'm not without sin... I've got these things in my head called sin, right? These sins that I created have become my demons. They're the things that that other thing called the serpent, which isn't in the garden with Adam and Eve, it's in our head and it has a forked tongue and that's why it's referred to as a snake. It's able to tell half truths, right? So it'll tell you half a truth. It'll wiggle half a tongue. And if you buy into its lies, you're going to find yourself in the same place I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> I'm just tired of listening to that liar. I just see it. When it starts lying to me, I just see it's lying. I just see that if I do this, I'm going to feel good for a second. But the truth is, it's going to hurt me more in the long run. And I'm going to feel guilty. And then I'm going to have to hide my thoughts from God. And then I'm going to get in a lot of pain. And then I'm going to have to run back to God and be like, God, forgive me for I know not what I do. And then he's going to forgive me. And then I'm going to get back on the wagon. So I'm just at that place where I'm just trying to stay on the wagon the best as possible because I'm tired of the pain. I just want to find joy. And the only way to find joy is to give joy. So therefore, I hope you find a little joy in these crazy messages that I leave on this internet. 
And if you don't, it's okay too, because like I said, it's I don't expect anybody buying into my babble. Tell you the truth, I kind of hope not too many people do. Not because I'm selfish and I don't want you to find what I have, but because I don't want you to think that I'm something. Because my ego, friend, thought of Satan, whatever you want to call it, of course, miracles calls it an ego. Bible calls it thought of Satan. And Jesus told those Pharisees, just so you understand, Jesus told those Pharisees that they were the son of Satan. And the friend, they were doing everything that the law asked. But they weren't given love and mercy. They were doing it for the law's sake and then glorifying themselves for it. And Jesus was saying that was wrong. Now, he wasn't saying that you shouldn't abide in the law. He was saying that the law's purpose is only to serve the true purpose, which is love and forgiveness. So if you're not having mercy, well, then you'll get no mercy because you gave no mercy. If you have given no forgiveness, you'll get no forgiveness. That's just the way it is. It's, and like I said, it's not this eternal hell thing. I'm telling you, you get to stay here doing this until you don't do it anymore. And I'm not talking about here. Friend, I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to get off here. Jesus said the fathers of spirit. What is spirit? If it's not flesh... If you take away your flesh, what do you have left? You have a thought, right? Now, you people think of spirit as ghosts and all this other stuff, whatever. You can think whatever you want. But if you take away my body, the only thing I've got left are the thoughts of who I am. So if you would have taken my body away from me when I had the thoughts of what I was, I would have been in hell. But now if you take my body from me, I would no longer be in hell because the thought of who I am is a thought of the love of Christ. Even though I screw it up, I still know that I'm trying to do the right thing and heading down the right path. And as best as I can, I'm doing it right, even except for when I choose to do it wrong. And I'm not here to say I'm perfect, friend. I'm not. I'm just not. There was only one, the firstborn. He was the only one who needed to be perfect. He needed to be the perfect example. He is a roadmap laid down to the kingdom. And any man that gets on that journey... We'll find it in the end, but you have to choose it, and you have to want it more than you want this world. So spirit is thought. So at the end of the day, if you take my body, I have spirit, which is thought, which is a thought of I am the love of my Father because I give to another what it is I seek for myself. And if you take my body and I'm left with spirit, I'm not in suffering because the new thought I have of me is worth having, and therefore I will clearly want to unite with my Father because of the, however... Jesus said that his words were judges. And before, had you taken away my body and left me the spirit of I am, which is what I was then, then I would have wanted to hide from my father. And therefore, I would have been in hell because I would have turned from the thought of God when I had nowhere to turn. And then he'd give me a new choice because I'm the one who made it. It wasn't God that would send me somewhere other than to this kingdom it's me that would do it because of the choices i made and the thought i would have about myself so my job is to do the right thing to get to understand what jesus was talking about because you can't do this i'm telling you right now you can't just make this decision and it's done it's an i am experience and it's an experience you have to choose you have free will and two thoughts selfishness brings suffering you choose it it's yours to have but at the end of the day when you stand before the thought of god if you look back and you say, oh, my God, I didn't do anything good for anybody, and I was this and I was that, well, then you're not going to unite with this thought of God, and it's not God that rejects you. It's because you already knew what Christ said. You already knew that what he said was true, and you wanted to deny it here, so you'll be denied it there. But it's not him denying it. It'll be us denying it ourselves. And I'm not talking about eternal hell. I'm talking about eternal suffering until you choose again. And if you thought it wasn't suffering now while you were hurting other people, you're going to hurt like you hurt them in, in your death. Spirit doesn't escape it's just the way it is. We're a thought of God until we choose again, because that's what we're here for. We're here for experience, but we're really here to give him an experience. Both are true. Neither are. How can I explain what's unexplainable? How can I tell you the truth about a lie and a lie about the truth? How can I say everything and say nothing for it? How can it all be right when it's all wrong? How can it all be wrong when it's all right? But I tell you, whatever you declare right for others is what's going to be declared right for you. And so therefore, I declare love right for you and forgiveness right for you so that I can have it for me. And because I give it to you, I have it for me. 
and therefore even though I was guilty then I'm not guilty now and I hope I keep making this choice every day but tomorrow I might make a new choice I might make the wrong choice and I might end up back in this place called pain and suffering because I chose selfishness over love this is the way it is and that's just you know but it, it gets so deep and there's so much that I but all the things that happened to me and I didn't have a good life and I wasn't good to other people a lot of times but it was through those experiences that I come to realize that I didn't want what I had and God couldn't give me a new thought because I had a choice between two thoughts and I kept choosing the wrong one but now that I've understood that Jesus I understand that I can choose either thought but if I want this other thought I can't choose it on my own I need faith in this Jesus and I need to let him give me a new thought called the Holy Spirit it's a holy thought and you have to start basing your life on Jesus's statements and truths and if you start doing that then that thought will be the one you'll follow but it's a choice it, it, there is no believe in Jesus since his death and you get an instant free ride to the kingdom go read his parables you will see that was clearly not the case now I'm only telling you this because my father said that I have to tell you this and you won't believe it you'll think that I'm trying to ruin everything and that I'm going to free people before they're ready and all kind of stuff friend believe me all that stuff went through my mind but when I promised my father my life and my death then this is what he gave me and this is what I've got I can't give you anything else because I've got nothing else to give except for what it is he gives to me and I come out here in the woods so that he can give me more so I can give more to you even though I give you nothing because it's got no meaning unless it's got meaning to you and if it's got meaning to you it's because you've got to know that Jesus and this truth about love and that love is greater than selfishness so if you want it it's yours to have if you're in pain right now and you you've been down this selfish path and all this judging other people you starting to realize that it's hurting you it is every judgment you make against them you make against yourself let me put it in one last logical way if I blame you for what you did a week ago it is logical that if you're guilty for it then I'm guilty for what I did a week ago too right so therefore, if I'm judging you, I'm judging me. But if I forgive you, then it's logical that if I forgive you, God will forgive me for a week ago, right? I'm just using a time frame here, throwing something that way, and it's not too far in the past. That way you'll start forgiving yourself for stuff now, like all the time, and realize that there's a better way of doing things and then choose it. So understand that love is the purpose of the world. And who chooses that experience will have a new I am but if you don't then the I am you are is the one you choose and therefore you will still be the son of Satan just like the Pharisees like Jesus had talked about because that's what he was talking about he said you're the sons of Satan they were the ones that were the Pharisees right they were the ones that were thought they were high and mighty so I just want you to understand that because this is all about I'm just here talking because well God told me as long as I keep talking I get to keep the kingdom if I shut up and I'll start hiding my thoughts and I'm tired of that so know that I love you because my father loves you and I forgive you because you're worth forgiving because you're a thought of love just like my father created you I don't care what you were yesterday you can be something new today if and as you choose it it's yours to have but if to choose it for you you have to choose it for everyone else and that means forgiveness and love is your path not selfishness and fear and even though it's going to start off as a mustard seed, if you start watering this and you start planting it and you stop looking at the world and you start looking at Jesus and you start spending your days thinking about how can I be loved, then you will find that love very fast. But if you want to only think about it once a week on Sunday, you'll never find it. The kingdom will never be yours because it's a choice of who we are, not give God an hour of one day of one week that ain't the way this works jesus told you that so you can buy into them or you can buy into him the choice is yours all right friend may god bless you and yours